In this video, we're going to look at deferred expenses. In Odoo 17, deferred expenses are much more streamlined. So let's take a look. We'll go from accounting into our configurations and settings, and we'll scroll down to our default accounts. What we want to look at under our default accounts is our deferred expense account. And that's going to default to current assets for us, but you can change this to any asset account that you would like to. So this is our deferred expense account and Odoo is going to automatically use that when we tell the system that we want to create a deferred expense. And the way we do that is simply by navigating to one of our vendor bills. Here we'll create one on the fly, but this could have come from a purchase order as well. And we'll just select vendor one here and we're just going to add a product or if we don't have a specific product, we can just add a label. And for this, maybe we say this was insurance. And keep in mind that there's going to be a default expense account here that uh, populates whether by the product or your default expense account that is um, just automatically filled in if we don't have a product. Here is just expenses, but that doesn't necessarily matter. We're gonna do quantity one, and let's just say this is $10,000. Now, if we wanna defer this over a period, so we'll say that this is February 1st was the bill date, and let's just change the accounting date to February 1st as well. Now, if we click our toggle to the right, we're going to see a start date and an end date, and we're going to enable those so that we can set them. Now, what the system is going to do is automatically create deferred expenses. We'll see that at the top of our screen in a smart button based on the dates that we have set here. So if I want to defer this from February 1st to, let's say, the end of the year, we will just scroll over to December 31st. And we'll save this. And now once we confirm this, the system's automatically going to take our deferred expense default account on configurations and create deferred entries over the course of the rest of the year. So let's go ahead and confirm that. Now automatically at the top of our screen, we see our deferred expenses. Now our normal journal entry does get created. We have a debit of $10,000 in expenses and a credit of $10,000 in our accounts payable. At the top of our screen, we can look at the entries that get created and we can scroll through them. So the first one is going to be our uh, journal entries. We have 229. So at the end of this month, we're going to offset those expenses. So we're going to credit back to $10,000. We're actually gonna move that value into our current assets. And then we have to create the deferred entry for that month. So then the next journal entry or journal item is going to be a 909.09 debit to our expense account and then the same to our current assets account. And that's us depreciating or rather deferring that expense for February. We'll do the same for each subsequent month until we meet our end of the year, which is going to be 11.30.2024. And we have actually one more journal entry at the end for 1231. So this was split up on multiple pages. Of course, if we wanted to see all of them on one view, we can adjust that at the top of our screen and we see all of our entries. So this is grouped here by journal entry. So if I click into one of them, I can look at the actual journal entry. Uh, let's go ahead and click into this journal entry here. And that will bring us to our journal entry with a note at the top of our screen letting us know that this is configured and will be posted automatically. And if we go to the other information here, we'll see that the auto post is at date, which is the accounting date set here. And we have a smart button that will relate us back to the purchase that created this deferred expense. So that's really all you need to know. Keep in mind again that our default expense account is going to be on our product or the default expense account on this line. We simply add a start and end date the system is going to use our default deferred expense uh, account that we set on our configurations and automatically create the deferred expenses over the time period that we set forth in our start and end date. 